Good? Alright, so without further ado, the champion of the Constitution, the taxpayer's best friend, a true home for America, Dr. Ron Paul. family here. I'm not sure where they are, but they're around. I have uh, a son here by the name of Ronnie. He graduated from University of Texas a few years ago. And he's here with uh, three daughters, and his oldest daughter just graduated from the University of Texas with his wife, Peggy. And also, and, and, and also we have uh, two daughters from our second daughter, uh, two granddaughters, uh, Valerie and Vicki. They're here. And uh, then we have our youngest daughter, Joy, with her husband, Andrew, and they're with their five children. So it is indeed a very nice benefit in politics to have delivered 4,000 babies and have large families. It's always been helpful. <laughs> But I thank you very much for coming out. This is, uh, this is very impressive and, and very pleasing. Because it reminds me of what happened about one year ago. A year, a little over a year ago, certain individuals came to me and they asked about running in this presidential race. And the truth is I was very reluctant to do so with the belief that there wouldn't be a very positive response. I am very pleased to tell you that I was wrong on that analysis. responded in such a positive manner, but some of those older folks who remembered a better time, they remember too, and they were like, pleased with the message. They, they have been individuals who knew about, uh, you know, the Constitution and limited government, a sensible foreign policy, but they just had sort of given up and they had dropped out. So, lo and behold, they saw an opportunity to come back in. So many who have dropped out and many who had never been involved have gotten involved. And believe it or not, we have gotten a lot of people involved in our campaign who call themselves Democrats. So we have Republicans involved and we have Independents involved and we have Democrats involved. And lo and behold, we have a few anarchists involved as well. But it, but it has been a very, very important year. First off, I want to thank Chris Robertson for gathering you together. Chris deserves a loud applause. But it was, it was just a number of little... It was just over a little over a year ago that we had our first debate, but we had a pre-arranged meeting here that Don Zimmerman, who has helped diligently in the meetup group here, he had had a meeting planned for us a couple days after the first debate. And we had expected a couple hundred people to come, which would have been a very nice turnout. And lo and behold, uh, when that rally came, we had 700 people. And it looks like there's a lot more than 700 here today. But it was then that I realized that we had something going that the country had moved much further along in the freedom movement than I ever dreamed. I always assumed that it would take another decade of basic education, teaching people why it's a good idea, you know, to get rid of the income tax, totally and completely. And I thought it would take a lot longer to teach everybody the fact that we don't need a Federal Reserve System. reception was much beyond what I had anticipated, and uh, the year has gone very well. 
we have gotten together not only tens of thousands, but literally hundreds of thousands of individuals like you have become very interested in what is happening, and you know what's at stake, and you want to see some real changes in this country. But you know, there's other, other things that are interesting. There, I did not coin the word, nor did the campaign coin the term, uh, you know, the Ron Paul Revolution. But it is indeed a revolution. It is indeed not a Ron Paul revolution as much as the continuation of the original intent of our revolution. So we have that, uh, that revolution to know and understand and follow through and improve upon. But there was also another revolution a lot uh, in, in not so long ago terms. In, in Texas history, there was a revolution. You know, when the settlers came to Texas, uh, the uh, Mexican government encouraged Americans to come to Texas. And in 1824, they had a sound constitution and they had a bill of rights, and it was very pleasing to the American settlers. But lo and behold, by 1832, something went wrong. Martial law was deter de uh, de you know, uh, declared by Santa Ana. He arrested some individuals, mainly including uh, a tra a Travis, a long time before the Alamo in 1832, and he was arrested and put into prison over in Anahuac, which is in the heart of our district right now, just in, in right near where we live. And that was when the first battle of the Texas Revolution was fought right at the doorstep of where we live today in what we call Surfside, Texas, where they bought, fought the Battle of Alaska. That led to a grand revolution and a grand victory for Texas a long time ago. And I'd like to see the continuation, not only of the American Revolution, but the Texas Revolution against the dictator. But the complaints at the time of our original revolution were similar to the complaints that our settlers had in Texas. It was the authoritarian rule of the government and not following the laws. Our founders of this country were very annoyed and upset about the loss of our, their privacy, invasion of their homes. And then, that is why they were determined to have a Fourth Amendment and a First Amendment. Likewise, it was this elimination of these personal liberties by Santa Ana that motivated the revolution against the Mexican government. And here we are once again today with a government that's violating our civil liberties here at home and not using the Constitution to protect us, but to hide behind the Constitution to expand illegally the size of government. That needs reverse. So I would like to think in a very positive fashion that in this past year we have ignited once again this spirit of liberty. The liberty that has made America great and the liberty that Texas was founded on. And our job in this campaign, whether we're here in Texas or across the country, is to perpetuate this message, continue it, and to not let it die. So regardless of what happens here in the near future, in the next election, regardless of what the consequences are, what we must say is this is only the beginning and not the end of this revolution.